Stenning is a typical sleepy British town in West Sussex, nestled right next to the South Downs National Park. It's not the most buzzing atmosphere, but among other things it's got pubs, cafes, and even a set of dentures embedded in a wall. Believe it or not, these are enough of a local attraction that I took a school trip that swung by here just to see them when I was younger. It's the kind of place where every building has a long, meandering story to tell. And the oldest structures make even its most elderly residents seem young. It's also where I grew up. That's where I learned to ride a bike. This is the middle school I went to. And here's where I fell off said bike and knocked out my teeth. Around 6,000 people, myself included, call it home and around 31% of them, myself not included, are over 65. But those are facts and numbers. What does Stenning feel like? What's it like to breathe its air, walk in its streets and talk to its people? Particularly during a national lockdown. That's Janine, who runs the cobblestone tea house just off the high street. As well as serving me a delicious cream tea, that's tea and scones, one of the most quintessentially British meals you can find, she told me she'd much rather have her business here than anywhere more built up. I prefer to be somewhere like this than I wouldn't want to be in the heart of Brighton or Worthing or Chichester or anywhere yeah. like that. You get all your regulars coming in and over time, over the last few years, it's, it's like a family that come in. So, um, and especially during Corona, when it was closed, when it was locked down, I'd message quite a few of the old elderly customers just to check they were all right. Whereas I think if you, if I was in a city, you wouldn't get that personal feel. You just get to know everybody. It's it's just really nice because people people know us here and they feel comfortable here. People don't want to go to a town. Even I don't. Even I don't. I haven't been to Brighton. I haven't been to. I haven't really gone anywhere that I wouldn't feel comfortable in. So I think the customers come here, they have a chat, especially the elderly ones. So this is, could be somebody, there. they only come out once a day. They come here, they know the girls. So they'll have a chat, they feel comfortable, and they've been stuck in for months. So for here, this is their bit of respite. It makes me happy that, you know, I make them feel that way. There's definitely a small town charm about Stenning. It might be harder to spot in a country like England, where people are a little reserved, but if you pay attention, you'll see it in the nods of acknowledgement between passers-by, the smiles of recognition between neighbours, and the spontaneous conversations in supermarket aisles, in the streets, and in parks. It feels cohesive, and that's something you don't get as much in larger towns and cities, where you have to search hard to find someone you know. A few days later, sitting in their garden under the watchful eyes of a porcelain collie dog, Mike and Jane reflected on the sense of community here, which has been highlighted during the coronavirus pandemic. One neighbour set up a WhatsApp group for our road so that um, we could all help each other because there were people who were completely isolated. They've got um, health problems, you know, and they couldn't go out shopping. So we all helped each other. <laughs> and that's a sign of a good community helping mm, each other, yeah. which is, which is um, a positive that this, this terrible COVID has taught us. But they're also quick to acknowledge that we're very privileged to be riding out the pandemic in a place like Stenning. The other phrase I have, have is, we're all in this together. No, we're not. <laughs> There, there are people Some are more equal than others. Yeah, people in high... We, we, we're lovely. Mm -hmm. This garden we could come to and work in, we weren't stuck on the top of a high-rise flat trying to live in one bed flat with a load of kids. Like many others, they hope the renewed community spirit that they've seen this year will stick around once the world opens up again. The words I like to phrase all the time is, I don't want to go back to normal. I want to go back to something better than the normal we had before. The normal we had before was unjust, 
It had people sleeping in the streets. We've got to change our ways. But will they? Will we go back to the old and forget about it and start being greedy again? Start ignoring our neighbours on a road? Some of them we, we had never met, which mm. is a, a shame on us. I'm not here to sell Stenet. So I feel it'd be disingenuous to gloss over the fact that it can be a little close to outsiders, particularly those from unconventional backgrounds. I think that's probably the case with most small towns. Being a single parent Jewish household, it took my mum and I quite some time before we felt like we fit in here. But once you do find your place, you'll see the familiarity that people here feel towards one another. And that's a large part of what holds a community together through something like a pandemic. Going from being almost constantly on the road for a year and a half to suddenly stuck at home was strange. But it gave me a chance to appreciate my hometown with all its virtues and flaws more than I ever have. For now, it's definitely not the worst place to be stuck while the world weathers a pandemic. <laughs>